Okay, so in here there are going to be two relatively large plagioclase grains uh, towards the center of the field of view. Um, they're low relief, clear, no pleochroism. Uh, but when the polars are crossed, you'll see one of them has some nice twinning, albite twinning, and the other one does not. That's a characteristic of plagioclase. Sometimes it has twinning and sometimes it doesn't. Now this is a single large plagioclase crystal, um, and uh, again, low relief, clear, kind of looks like quartz um, in plain polarized light. Uh, but when you cross the polars, then you'll see um, there is a little bit of twinning on the outer edges, um, but it's also chemically zoned. And so it has this um, extinction that sweeps from the interior to the exterior and, and vice versa. Um, another example of plagioclase, um, there's a single large grain. Again, you can't see it because it's got such low relief um, and no pleochroism. Uh, when you cross the polars, you'll see that part of this crystal um, is uh, has lots of twins through it, and part of the crystal does not have twins in it. Um, the inclusions there are quartz and um, biotite. Now this one will trick you. So again, low relief, um, no pleochroism. Um, when I cross the polars, you're going to say, that looks like quartz. And the fact is that that plagioclase grain in the center does look like quartz. It doesn't seem to have any twinning, doesn't seem to have any zoning. Um, and yet it is plagioclase, and I know it's plagioclase because I spent three hours on an electron probe looking for quartz in this sample unsuccessfully. This is another example of a large crystal that has both twinning and zoning. So after the polars are crossed, you'll see this kind of trapezoidal uh, feature towards the middle of it um, with uh, this sweeping extinction because of the chemical zoning. Uh, but then there's also lots of uh, twinning in there. There's some K feldspar around the outside and also a little quartz. This is plagioclase from a granite, and uh, you'll see once the polars are crossed that um, it just has lots and lots of twinning. Um, really characteristic of uh, plagioclase that you see in um, intrusive rocks. Yeah, there's some quartz on the edge, and I think a little K feldspar too. Now this is one of the most bizarre samples I've ever collected. I think this was a vesicular basalt and the vesicles were filled with zeolites. Then it was metamorphosed to amphibolite facies and all the zeolites in that circular region have been metamorphosed to form plagioclase. Section's a tiny bit thick so the plagioclase is a little bit yellow, but um, I'm pretty sure that's the origin of, of this uh, rather unusual texture. Now this is plagioclase from a mafic igneous rock, um, and when uh, it's all of those light-colored laths or the, the sort of blocky crystals in there um, across the polars, and you'll see there's twinning, there's some zoning, nice zoning in one of those crystals. Um, but that kind of simple twinning is really uh, common in volcanic uh, plagioclase. Now, this is a really bizarre looking uh, plagioclase. It's uh, from an alkali basalt, and it has a lot of, um, of melt inclusions in them, where they were melt, now they're glass. Uh, so they're black, and when you cross the polars, they, they stay black. Um, but again, you can see the twinning that we see is so characteristic of plagioclase. Now this last one is a little tricky. When I cross the polars, you'll see there are two sets of twins that intersect each other. Plagioclase has two different uh, twin laws that it follows, albite twinning and paracline twinning, and this crystal actually shows both of them. Now this is not the same twinning that you see in microcline, K-feldspar. That has a much more uh, moir kind of effect. 
these um, intersect at, at, uh, at sharp angles, um, and so they're distinct from K-Feldspar.